There's no such thing as a time machine. And yet, often merely turning a page could bring the past much closer. Close enough to make fantasies and dreams a reality. And sometimes, close enough to touch that part of us which never gets old. And that's what our story's about in this episode of Still the Beaver. until the cops stopped us. I figured if Freddy's cousin had a car, he was old enough to have a driver's license. What are you talking about? Oh, what a terrible nightmare. <laughs> Oliver, how many times have we told you you can't read comics after lights out? Counting this time? <laughs> Beaver, just look at these comic books. They're gonna rot his mind. Mom, I know how you feel, but at least he's reading. Yeah. Oliver, they're more constructive things to fill your mind with than Lava Lady, Captain Adam, and Brain Boy. Hey, they still make Brain Boy? <laughs> yeah, but now I grew another head. You had to give him twice the brain power. Thank you, Beaver. I knew I could count on you to back me up. <laughs> Oliver, lay off the comics for a while, okay? And Kip, I think we should discuss your nightmare in the den right now. Thanks a lot, brain boy. <laughs> Boy, grown-ups sure are weird. They hang all their junk in the living room 
and they stash all the neat stuff up here. <laughs> hey, look. I never knew Grandpa Ward was there with this young. Do you remember Grandpa at all? Just a little bit. How about you? Um, mostly that it was real nice and I had kind of big ears. When I grow up, I want to be just like him. Well, you're already doing pretty good in the ear department. Hey, <laughs> cut it out! Stop! <laughs> you were going to show us. Yeah, we've been here for half an hour and all we've done is watch the Munsters. Hey, you've got to admit, it was a good one. Yeah, it wasn't as good as the one where the Dodgers signed Herman. <laughs> okay, look. The reason I invited you over is, you know, you guys mean more to me than anybody in the world. Yeah, I tell that to my family too, but I don't mean it. I wanted you guys to be with me for this very special moment. Which begins right now. Hi. I'm Edward Haskell, president of Haskell Construction Company. And I'm standing on my father's grave to prove a point. <laughs> the point is, you just can't find a better construction company to build that extra room you've always dreamed of. Be it a rec room, a family room, or just some place to stash your wife's relatives. <laughs> and I swear on my father's grave that we'll build it for you better, cheaper, and faster than any of our competition. Because at Haskell Construction Company, we don't just build houses, we build homes. <laughs> so, guys, what do you think? I know my hair could have looked a little better, but the honesty garbage really plays, doesn't it? <laughs> it's one thing to misrepresent your product. Everybody does that. <laughs> but, Eddie, your father's still alive. Yeah, I know, but there's nothing I can do about that. <laughs> and what poor timing, son. You just missed my commercial. Hopefully, Grandpa did, too. <laughs> yeah, he could take a joke. You ever see his second wife? Mr. <laughs> Cleaver, if perchance you're headed back to the family compound, I'm in need of a ride. Wait. You can't leave now. It's on Channel 62 in Spanish. <laughs> Hola, yo soy Eduardo Haskell, el presidente de la compañía Haskell de Construcción. Aquí estoy en la tumba. <laughs> Well, not bad. Okay. Be good. So, do you want them or not, Freddy? And remember, I'm here to make sure you don't rip them off. We cut them in five percent. Well, these books are in the worst condition I've ever seen. Tell you what. I'm in a good mood. I'll give you three fifty for the whole lot. Freddy, I knew I couldn't put one over on you, Kip. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> all right, six bucks. But don't tell everyone I let you walk all over me like this. Deal. Wait a minute. Something smells here. I bet we could get more from that comic book store in Bellport. Wait a minute, Kelly. We had a deal. Yeah. Give them back. Make me. All right. No, they're mine. No, I know. Come on, stop you. Mine. Boy, you'll destroy it. Freddy, why do I have the distinct feeling that uh, those comic books are worth more than a buck? Well, these, rubbish. But this. Fantastic Four number one. The single most valuable comic book of the entire Silver Age. Just how valuable? Take me to get some riding boots. Riding boots. Quali, did you hear that? <laughs> riding boots. Don't tell me. You just can't live without them because all the other kids are wearing them, right? <laughs> no, just the kids with horses. Really? Last time I checked, you didn't have a horse. Well, if I had the boots and one happened to follow me home and say, a week, then I wouldn't have to wait to ride it. <laughs> You can help me turn the mattresses. Hmm. Mom, can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. Is it natural for a little girl to suddenly become obsessed with horses? Oh, please, Wally. When I was young, I used to draw horses. I had a collection of ceramic horses. <laughs> and every morning, I'd run out and give a lump of sugar to the horse that used to draw the milk wagon. Well, that would be fine. But Kelly's out shopping for saddles. Uh, sometimes I think it would be better if she just started getting interested in boys. She is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just be thankful she isn't interested in comic books. They're all over the place. It's all Oliver thinks about. He's got a good mind to throw them all in the trash. Mom, it didn't do any good when you threw Beaver's comic books away. Come to think of it, he's never really gotten over it. Very funny, Wally. Well, if you don't have any more mattresses for me to turn, I'll run home to my wife and Dale Evans. <laughs> Wally, hmm? you know I saw the strangest thing today on television. Oh, don't worry about it, Mom. Eddie Haskell's dad's just fine. <laughs> One day, he's going to thank me for this. <laughs> Happy Halloween. Good afternoon, Mrs. Cleaver. Might I say that the jazz age becomes well. <laughs> thank you, Freddie. And that's a lovely... Uh, well, it certainly is a lot more tasteful than your father's television ad. Most things are. <laughs> yeah. Freddy's here. Excuse me. Hey, Freddy. What do you think? Uh, Chip, <laughs> if I'm going to insult someone, don't just hand it to me on a platter. I prefer a little challenge. <laughs> All right, try to do better in the future. Come on, I'll play a game of chess. Aren't you too adorable? And you say you can't find any cute maternity clothes. <laughs> Oliver, you're not supposed to just eat 
the icing off the cupcakes. It's all right. I only like the cake part. <laughs> what a team. Hey, Oliver, did you get any mail today? Anyone answer our ad? Nah, all I got was my new boy's life. <laughs> oh, that JJ, just like her mother. <laughs> Cider? Hmm. Aren't you a little early this year, Santa? Don't give me the business, Lumpy. By the time I got to the costume shop, all they had left was this and Rosemary's baby. Oh, you look cute. I told you not to wait till the last minute again, do you? Great! Our first trick-or-treaters! <laughs> Thank you. I'm Kirk Newhouse. I'm here to see Mr. Cleaver on some rather pressing business. Oh, well, won't you come in? Thank you. Theodore, this is Mr. Newhouse. I hope I'm not interrupting anything. Oh, don't be silly. We do this every Thursday. <laughs> what can I do for you, Mr. Newhouse? Why don't you ask him if he's been a good boy this year? <laughs> I'm here to answer the ad about the comic book. Comic book? Oh, <laughs> you want that, Mr. Cleaver. Uh, uh, which head should I talk to? Mine. Uh, why don't we just go upstairs and talk about this in my office? Excuse me, Mr. Newhouse, but, uh, what kind of business could you possibly have with people in grammar school? I represent a consortium of credit dentists in Minneapolis who purchase comic books as an uh, investment, and they've sent me here to uh, buy the comic you advertised. Well, who advertised? Book. Fantastic Four Number One. We found it in the attic, and, uh, well, you said we could have anything we liked, mm -hmm. and we really liked this. <laughs> so you just happened to forget to tell us about it. Oh, we didn't forget. Freddie said if we tipped you off, you wouldn't let us keep the money. Freddie? Mm. Uh, you see, uh, I'd have the child's hearing tested. What I said was you'd never let them swim after eating. <laughs> Kelly, what's how could you have done that? Do you know you know what's going on? Listen, listen, listen. You people work this out amongst yourselves. But if this comic is in mint condition as advertised, I've been authorized to pay $3,000. Uh, all right. $3,000? For a 10 cent comic? And I waste my money on tax-free bonds? <laughs> Just don't stand there, Oliver. Where's the comic book? Don't worry, Dad. I kept it real safe under my mattress. Um, wait a minute, dear. <laughs> it's not there. Well, sure it is, Grandma. Yeah. No, you see, yesterday I... Well, I... Mom, you didn't throw all those comics in the trash, did you? No. Oh. Oh. I took them to the recycling center. And only give each trick or treat of one piece of candy. Look, it's got to be here someplace. Let's split up and find it.
that she was going to be all white. Real original. <laughs> and I was going to take my whole class to Disneyland for my first day. Even Dog Breath Atkins? Yeah, even her. <laughs> Hi, kids. I know how disappointed y'all must be. And I was counting on a big haul of candy tonight. Debbie, could you just make believe you're not here? Oh, I do that real good. <laughs> been on business trips with my dad. Kids, I know I should have had more respect for your property. Don't worry, Grandma. I tried being mad at you for a few minutes, but I couldn't go through with it. <laughs> I had no idea a comic book could be so valuable. But, Grandma, every comic book is valuable, because once a guy reads it, he gets to be someone else for a while. Sort of like Halloween. Hmm. Well, I guess I never looked at it like that. It's still Halloween, and I'll bet if you try real hard, you could still have a good time. Come on, let's get everybody and go home. I thought we could find it, Grandma. I tried so hard. Can you drop me off first? I want to get home before the neighborhood kids start egging my house. <laughs> Kelly, you ever wonder how you lost your mulberry bush doll? <laughs> Well, everything seems to be in order here, except that the check should be made out to my brother and me, who will act as custodians. All right. It's not fair. How come we can't be the janitors of our own money? <laughs> Kids, we've been through this before. The money is going into a savings account to earn interest. And then when you need it for something important, like college, it'll be there. This is a wonderful thing for you guys. Horse is a wonderful thing, too. <laughs> okay, Beeve. All you got to do is sign right here. Wally, this is the sensible thing to do, right? Right. Maybe this one time we shouldn't do the sensible thing. I'm back in the saddle again. Yeah. Beaver, I thought this was settled. The money's going into a bank. One day the kids will be grateful. Like I was supposed to be when Dad made me sell the car that I won? Put the money in a savings account? Do you know what it's like to take a girl to the drive-in on a bicycle and then try to impress her with your bank statement? Beaver, I never knew that bothered you so much. Come on, Mom, tell him, will you? Well... Maybe your brother's right. After all, it is their comic. They ought to be able to do what they want with it. Uh, listen, I have 15 anxious dentists who are waiting for my phone call now. Do we have a deal or not? It's up to them. Excuse us. We've made a decision. Thanks for your offer, Mr. Newhouse. But if you don't mind, we're going to keep it. <laughs> yeah. So one day, Kelly can own that stable full of horses, and I can get that submarine I've always wanted. <laughs> now, you're sure this is what you want? Yeah. And we figured we'd have a lot more fun owning that comic book than a bunch of dentists would. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.